is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. And now for something really exciting. This one is a sleeper. Well, in part because we had it sitting here for six weeks. Sorry, Toshiba. We had so many things in the queue to review. And a lot of people think Toshiba doesn't even make laptops or sell them in the United States anymore, other than maybe the business market. Well, they do. And this one's available on Microsoft Store website and in their stores too. Starting at $11.99, which is nice because Toshiba's laptops also used to be very expensive, the ones they were still selling in the United States because they were corporate oriented. And much better even than the Toshiba Z20T, two-in-one, the separable one that we reviewed. That was a cult classic among tablet PC users, but not so much anybody else. This one has full Intel Core i5 and i7 CPUs, despite the fact it's incredibly thin at 15.4 millimeters and light, 2.4 pounds, which is 1.08 kilograms. And that's, well, in LG Gram territory. And this one is a 360-degree two-in-one. So permanently attach the two halves, matte display, Wacom AES pen in the box. And it's the Toshiba Portage X20W-D. Remember, we're going to look at it now. So the Toshiba Portage X20W-D is one piece of lovely, lightweight, magnesium alloy laptop convertible. Does the usual tent, presentation mode, tablet mode, all that sort of things. It feels pretty stiff and pretty rigid considering the fact that it weighs around that magic kilogram weight. There's a little bit, you know, if you push in here, you can feel the way magnesium alloy does ever since the days of the uh, classic Sony Vias. A little bit of give, but nothing disheartening. In fact, I, nothing about this says treat it very carefully to me. Besides the fact that it's so light, you can flip it around all day and have fun with it. It has a Thunderbolt 3 port on the side, slash USB-C Gen 2, does both of those. And yes, it's four lanes, Thunderbolt 3, which is pretty amazing in something this small. In fact, it has a little daughter card that just seems to handle the Thunderbolt features. We'll see that when we take it apart. Other than that, it is super thin, it is super light, unlike the Z20T 2-in-1 where the keyboard base could have a lot of ports because the brains are all in the upper section. This one has to do everything but the brain's just in the base because it's not separable. We have a USB, typical A, 3.0 port right here. We have a headphone jack. You got a Kensington lock slot. That's about it. So USB-C docks, Thunderbolt docks. Toshiba sells a Thunderbolt dock. They have a Ygig dock. You can use other brands as well. If you need more ports, you're obviously going to need something like that, which is going to add on something around 250 bucks if you do the Thunderbolt solution. USB-C multi-port adapters are a lot cheaper. Now in the box, Toshiba feels you. They know that since you're charging through that USB-C slash Thunderbolt 3 port, if you want to use any kind of USB-C adapter, you might have to plug it into power. So in the box, you have this HDMI USB-C adapter, and there's pass-through charging here, so you're not completely out of luck. And there are other USB-C hubs that can do that, too. Just make sure you get one that handles charging. Full Intel Core i5 and i7 CPUs inside Core i5. 5-7200U, Core i7-7500U. There's also the 7600U if you want. All have Intel HD 620 integrated graphics and single fan design, thus exhaust out of here. Now they have your little warning spot. This is where the CPU is under here. And this is could get hot warning. Now, rarely does it actually get hot. The fans, you might expect this to be a noisy bugger because it's so thin. You have full KB Lake seventh generation dual core 15 watt CPUs there, no Wimpy Core M. You know, the first couple of days after I got it, setting it up, Windows updates, installing stuff, I heard the fan a lot. It's audible. I mean, it's not a large fan, so it's not going to fill the room with noise, but it's audible. But after doing that setup, I really didn't hear it again. Not when playing casual games, not when using Photoshop with a fairly complex image. So I wouldn't worry too much about the fan noise, but you might hear it in the first couple of days. And likewise, the heat manageable on this, which is really an engineering accomplishment. When you compare this to something like Surface Pro 4, which could sometimes be a vacuum cleaner and get very hot on the back, I, this is just... <laughs> impressive stuff. And that's who this competes with, along with products like the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, which typically costs a lot more money. The, the Acer Switch series as well. And yeah, there's a few out there. Some of them are separable 2-in-1s, but not too many are like this. The Lenovo Yoga 720, a little bit, but that's a 13.3 inch. This is a 12.5 inch model. 
So a Microsoft Store has two configurations. They have a Core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. For $11.99 and for $14.99, there's the Core i7 with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. It uses low power DDR3 RAM and PCIe NVMe SSDs, but they are the PCIe SSD is actually soldered on board. That's how they make it so small. You'll see the insides of this, and it's a very compact motherboard. So upgradable after the fact, not so much. The display is 19 by 1920 by 1080 and 12.5 inches. It's an IPS display with a matte coating on it. That's not bad. It doesn't make it look really ugly or grainy. It's an IPS display. Again, it supports pen, the included Wacom AES pen, and touch as well. It has both an IR camera for Windows Hello login and a fingerprint scanner that's embedded in the top corner of the trackpad. That's a Synaptics trackpad, and it's pretty good. Uh, you've got the usual Synaptics software customizations available. The only thing I noticed is that finger tracking seems set to be a little bit slow out of the box, but you can change that. The keyboard is backlit. It's an excellent keyboard, really. It has nice tactile feel and good damping, but typical of Toshiba, they go with small keys and big key spacing. So you've got plenty of space between the keys, but the keys caps themselves are on the small side. So if you have big hands with fat fingers, this might not be the laptop for you. But I found it really enjoyable to touch, but I have long skinny fingers. Intel 8265AC Wi-Fi is standard with Bluetooth 4.2 on this. And we have a 44 watt hour battery inside this, a three cell battery. And after you see the internals, you know that pretty much the entire internals are taken up by that battery. Now Toshiba claims a crazy 13 hours of battery life. All right, that's optimistic. Yes, if you, if you set brightness down to zero and use it to do absolutely nothing, you might hit that. But really, it does manage about eight hours of light to moderate use. That doesn't mean playing League of Legends or killing it in Adobe Premiere for hours on end, but if you have a couple of Photoshop image edits, the usual Word, Excel, online database updates, that sort of stuff, streaming video, which is easy for Intel 7th generation CPUs to, to handle. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. So you really could go all day away from the AC outlet. Comes with a USB-C charger. It's a compact 45 watt charger. And I tried a bunch of other USB-C chargers I had sitting around for laptops. They all work just fine too. It's not picky. The display metrics are good. To look at it, it looks kind of reminds me of the typical business display, which is to say it looks very competent. It's quite bright at 330 nits. It didn't stand out as a, wow, super awesome display, other than the fact that it's matte. No reflections. Thank you very much. You can use it outdoors. You can use it in bright lighting. Uh, but the metrics actually are pretty good, and you can see all of them on screen there. The color representation in terms of gamut is good. 78% of Adobe RGB, in fact, is a few percentage points above the $1,000 and up class right there. Nice brightness, great black levels. It's a pretty good display. And even the Delta E isn't that bad. It's too cool, which most laptops are out of the gate, but calibration fixes that. So if, you, if you're even going to pick this up and use this for art and you're cool with Wacom AES, which offers at least 2,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, uh, no tilt, does have palm rejection, it, it's, it's adequate for the task, certainly. It's not bad to draw on. Not as great as Wacom EMR, but hey. What can you do? Very, very few laptops come with Wacom EMR technology anymore for you artists. For note taking, great stuff. Lovely. Works nicely. So this is the pen that it comes with, which uh, Toshiba calls their true pen. And this is a little cap for your pointer right here, and you can put it on the back end so you don't lose it. Two buttons right there. Again, it's Wacom AES, so any other Wacom AES pen will also work. And it uses a quadruple A battery. You unscrew this, just grab like so, and keep unscrewing it. And you can get to the quadruple A battery that you'll have to replace probably like once a year is also. No biggie there. And there's the control panel that's pre-installed for Wacom's field driver. So you can control a variety of things, including the pen pressure, the, what the buttons do on a global basis, radial menu, you get the idea, all that sort of stuff. While this might have the horsepower to tackle any task that you would Put it a high-end Ultrabook with a Core i5 or i7 CPU. The audio can't quite keep up, and that's because the thing is so darn small. Yes, it has stereo Harman Kardon speakers and DTS audio here, and you can see our little control panel. You got some EQ and that sort of thing, but the speakers have no bass really, and the, the, at least the highs are pretty clear. I, I give it that, but overall, it's just a complete lack of bass, even with this bass boost feature turned on. But that's to be expected with something this teeny tiny. 
So now that we've removed the bottom cover, and keep in mind that the Phillips head screws are nice, easy, and simple, but they're two different lengths, so keep track of them so you put them back in the right places. Anyway, just unscrew it, this pops off. No annoying clips, nothing like that. Battery comprises most everything, which is typical of today's Ultrabooks, 44 watt hour battery right there. Here's our fan, here's our CPU. This is the socketed Wi-Fi card now. The RAM, and it looks like the PCIe NVMe SSD must be soldered on board. I mean, having the RAM soldered on is not unusual. The SSD, less common, but obviously there is no M2 slot anywhere on this motherboard. This battery takes up too much space. There's not enough room underneath that for that, and the motherboard ends right here. We've got the two little sections going right here. There's not enough room even underneath, so it has to be soldered on. So there it is. Get it with the amount of storage that you want. So that's the Toshiba Portage X20W. Dash D. Not the most exciting name, granted, but certainly not a Mickey Mouse laptop. Get it? Yeah. Core i5, i7 CPUs, up to 16 gigs of RAM, fast PCIe, NVMe SSDs, a matte full HD display that's pretty decent, a Wacom AES pen in the box, a nice price. It's so thin, it's so light, you can take it anywhere. Magnesium alloy casing. You know, if you're like something like Surface Pro, you think, oh my goodness, seems a little delicate to me, or some of the other very thin and light laptops. This one, not so much. This is like, yeah, I'll take this anywhere and not worry about it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. Thumbs up if you liked it, and stay tuned for more videos. We usually do them every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.